connection to what is a master data. And I showed you on the screen uh, where exactly the master data fits in. So I showed you one sales document. Inside that I showed you where we have the sold to, where we have the ship to party as a customer. And then we also saw what is uh, the other master data related to material and customer material information record. So uh, let me know if any one of you have any concerns or queries or if you are not able to follow what we discussed yesterday before we start with uh, uh, today's uh, session. Sir, it's the same. Uh, I have told you just okay. before. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what are the concepts that you are not able to follow? Uh, sir, uh, uh, it's not uh, just for concept. Uh, means, means uh, uh, our concern is mm -hmm. uh, just uh, slow down your uh, pace of teaching, as we are not good English listeners. So it will be better for us. That's what. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Let us move on to this uh, session. So if you have any doubts or issues in following me, please stop me then and there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. definitely. I have shared my screen, so let me know when you're able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So today we will start our uh, day or our session with the next uh, subsequent topics in SAP Sales and Distribution module. So before we move on to the next concept, uh, today we will be almost uh, focusing on unit two uh, which is sales and distribution process what are the different process that are involved in sales and distribution so from the day one i have been telling you that our primary focus uh, is on sales part so you are all clear of what is meant by sales. Sales means you are selling some goods or services to your customer. It cannot need not be that physical materials you are sending. It could also be a service like teaching someone or uh, repairing some product or uh, advice to someone. So that is also a service. So that is also a sales. So you are not only physically you are selling some product like refrigerator or car or a bike or a cycle that is also sales. You are trying to service some product that is also kind of a sales. So in this concept of sales and distribution, we have certain processes that are laid down as part of this uh, business scenarios. So let us try to understand what are the steps inside the sales and distribution process? So the sales and distribution process in any business scenario. So let us consider a business scenario where you are trying to sell some automobile. So this is the business or this is a company so this company is involved in selling of automobiles so inside this there could be many processes that are involved so there could be procuring the raw material 
manufacturing product then selling the product when you say after you sell then you need to physically move the product to the customer so logistics which involves moving the or the right term would be shipping the goods then you have sold your product so you need to get money for whatever you have sold right so you have to invoice the customer invoice means the billing you need to do invoice the customer then receive the incoming payment so these are the business steps that would be involved when you are trying to sell something so the first two pro processes like trying to uh, uh, procure the raw material and manufacturing the product it does not interest us because these are some involved with planning procurement purchase or manufacturing etc so these are not part of a sales and distribution process so the sales and distribution process actually starts when you try to sell the products to your customer so now you are actually trying to sell the product so let us ignore these two at this point of time so i am removing them now we will start only with the sales aspect so your industry is like you are trying to manufacture car and you are trying to sell the car so before you start with sales what are the pre sales activities that you would be performing so you will try to set up some campaign or certain trade fairs or it could be that uh, you will be calling your customers informing them that you have launched a new product or a new version of the car and will they be interested in buying that so you are every day you are receiving many phone calls right so uh, we are calling from so and so company and uh, we are interested to sell this product so will you be interested so these these are all our examples of pre sales activities pre sales activity is the first step in any sales process so what are the pre sales activities so you can see if any uh, when you walk in the streets you can see that uh, they might have organized some kind of a campaign or some uh, activities uh, like uh, they would have put up some umbrella kind of uh, setup and they will sit on that and uh, sit inside that and they will try to give uh, pamphlets or brochures they will display their product at the end of your street so this kind of activities you might have seen these are all pre sales activities also if you visit any malls or uh, shopping complex there they would have displayed their product and around that uh, they you could see some sales people who would be uh, explaining those products some kind of activities would be going on like that so those are all pre sales activities so pre sales activities uh, generally include some campaign trade fair calling activity mailing activity advertise sorry ah, yeah advertisement right right sales set placements etc so these are all pre sales activities so you know that uh, some people would be interested in all this they will visit their uh, uh, this stand in the fair or they will see the advertisement and call the company and they will show interest so once they show some interest on a product we call it as a inquiry so this inquiry is the first step so you you are like for example let us see that uh, uh, you see a car on the end of your street they have displayed it and you are more keen to know more details about that 
it looks attractive so you wanted to know more details about that product so you call the company or directly visit the showroom and ask them what is this product all about what is so special about this car or uh, you might have specific questions whether this car uh, has a, a airbag in that or any specific things like whether this uh, we have led lamps in that or something like that so all these inquiries you make so the supplier or the automobile showroom they will send you an inquiry it's a document like yesterday how we see we saw a sales order right so inquiry is a kind of a sales document type which is the first step so inquiry sales document type inquiry will be created although this inquiry is created it is not a binding document there is no such binding that you are definitely you need to purchase the product or something like that it is just a non binding document where the information they will specify in this is what is the name of the customer or who has asked for this inquiry so sold, sold to party and material what is the product and what is the quantity so you purchase one car so you put the quantity and these are very simple information that an inquiry will have so this inquiry is just to record electronically to record that so and so customer is interested in so and so product this is just a recording electronic recording of your interest in that product so this is the first step inquiry document would get generated or the system uh, you will create an inquiry document like how you create a sales order so similarly we create an inquiry we use uh, different transactions for that i will tell you what transactions we use so we create an inquiry so everyone are you clear yes yes sir yeah uh, vivek yes. you are clear yes sir so once we create this inquiry now this is a non binding uh, document so there is no hard and fast rule that uh, you have to buy that product it's just an inquiry you went you showed some interest in your product and it is recorded that's all you the the supplier or the automobile uh, showroom has recorded your interest in that product so that is it so now the next step now you say you wanted to purchase one quantity so now you went back home you did some analysis you, you inquired about this uh, with your friends your family everyone and finally let us assume that you have decided to buy this car now after having decided to buy you go back to the automobile showroom and you tell them boss uh, see i want to purchase this car so what would be the best uh, deal that uh, i can have in short uh, you call it as a quotation so you might have received some quotations appear uh, also whenever you have some interest in a product the business or the uh, seller will raise a quotation inside this quotation what are the information it will have it will have customer information like to whom they are selling this what is the material this is the product i information quantity so let us say one quantity along with that you will have some information about the price validity of the price ounce will be applied so this kind of information will be present in the quotation so inquiry i told you is a non binding document there is no hard and fast rule that uh, you have to abide by that inquiry it there is no validity period as such it's just a formal inquiry but a quotation will have a validity period starting from say uh, the date on which you have inquired so today you have went and told that you are interested so from today until end of this month 
this quotation would be valid. So whatever price they specify. So let us uh, un understand that they have specified some silex. So if any discount is there, they just assume they give some 10% discount. This is the quotation. Quotation is a binding document. So the why I am calling this as a binding document is because it has a specific validity period within which after which this whatever they say may not be valid. So after you go on 1st of October, if you go and uh, tell them that, sir, uh, uh, you uh, sent me a quotation for this product for and the price was 5 lakhs and you told that uh, you would give me a discount of 10%. Uh, Is it valid now means they will say no, sir, sorry. The prices are increased with effect from today. So the new price would be 6 lakhs and uh, no more discounts are applicable for this product because there is high demand for this. Something like that, if they tell, then it means that the quotation is not valid. So the quotation has a validity period and within that period, you are required to take a decision whether to buy or not. So here also there is no hard and fast rule that you need to buy that product. You need to make some kind of a decision and inform them that whether you will buy or you are not interested anymore on that product. So this is a quotation. So quotation we call it is as a binding document. So in case if they fail to give or fail to adhere to these terms, then you are likely to raise this with the authorities or you can also have a legal action saying that sir I received a quotation but they are not standing by that. So this is a legally binding document. So there is another transaction which we can use uh, to uh, create a end quotation. We can always refer to the inquiry and create a quotation. So we can use another document type for example QT. This would be the document type that would be used to create a quotation. So you created inquiry. You, we can refer that inquiry and we can create a quotation. So I can I will tell you how to create a quotation by referring to the inquiry. And uh, after you created the quotation, you again went back. So you discussed with everyone. You discussed with your friends, your family, relatives, everybody. And they say that this is uh, one of the best deals that they have ever come across and you are also personally satisfied that this is a very good deal. So you decided to go ahead with your purchase. Are you clear with this inquiry and quotation until now? Uh, yes, sir. Sir means the difference between binding and non binding document is that. Uh, uh, means we can means it's uh, like uh, uh, what we can say. See, inquiry will not have any specific validity period or any terms of sale will not be present. Okay. But quotation will have a validity period and it will have certain terms and conditions like we will give this discount, we will have this price, all these things, we will have this delivery date. So delivery also will be present. Delivery date will be uh, two weeks from date of uh, receiving the payment. All, yeah, these are all information like which will be uh, like an agreement between you and the seller. OK, got it. Means, uh, in binding document, there are some commitments which give on from Binding in the sense what I mean by a binding document is there are conditions inside this like price, validity, discounts, delivery date, etc. So inquiry doesn't have all these things. Although you will have be having some kind of a details in that it may or may not be binding like you cannot go and tell them that based on this inquiry you have to give me this price only. Nobody will do that because inquiry is not a formal agreement. But quotation is a formal document. It is like uh, you can go and uh, have it 
have a validity for that. So within this period, if you buy, we will give this discount. So before Diwali, if you purchase, we will give you a discount of 20%. After Diwali, we don't know whether their discount will be still valid or not. So that kind of thing. So you, you might have seen this in your everyday situations, right? You, during festive season, they will be offering big discounts. But after you the festival ends, you go that discounts will not be applicable anymore, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So those kind of scenarios you should imagine yourself. Got it, so now you created the quotation by referring to the inquiry. So now you have decided to go ahead with the purchase of the car. So now you went and told them that, sir, I will buy this car. Uh, and now the seller will create a sales order because now you have confirmed. Sales order is another binding document. So sales document type. We will use a standard sales document type or we will have customer sold to party. Then we will have uh, material. Then we will have quantity. Price. We will have discount. We will have delivery date. So all this will be present inside the sales order. So now you can see that the pre-sales activities, whatever you have done, like uh, a trade fair or a campaign or a mailing campaign or a calling campaign, all these has resulted in inquiry, then a quotation, then by referring to this quotation, an order got created successfully. So this is typically so what is happening in any business scenarios? So although like uh, you may not have an inquiry every time for a regular customer who buys every day or who buys every month, you are buying uh, uh, groceries every month. So it is a regular purchase. So nobody is going to uh, raise an inquiry or quotation for that. So you go straight, you walk into the store, you buy groceries. So for example, if you want to buy some uh, what to say, uh, dress, you want to buy some dress. So you will not uh, go and uh, inquire about that. Right? If you are interested, you will go and buy, otherwise you leave it. Right? So there could be situations where orders would get created without inquiries and quotations as well. But this is a formal uh, business case that I have presented here. So the first step would be to create an inquiry. We can refer that inquiry and create a quotation and we can refer that quotation and we can create a sales order. Sales order is a uh, final uh, product of final uh, document that gets created based on the quotation, which means that you are concluding a sale. So the result as a result of your uh, campaigns, uh, you have finalized the sale. So that is what it means when you create a sales order. Okay, so are you guys clear until this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. And now, uh, if you go to this theoretical concept, you can see the process cases. So here uh, you can see whatever I have told you, they have listed here. So I have told you a sales and distribution process may be triggered by specific marketing and pre-sales measures. So these are my mailing campaigns, internet advertisements, trade fairs, or telephonic campaigns. The possible result of such campaigns can be a non-binding customer inquiry or a request for quotation. So inquiries and quotations help you to determine important sales related data and can be saved as document. If the customer places an order, 
you can then access this data. So why do we really need an inquiry or a quotation? Why can't we directly uh, create a sales order? So when we give some more thought into this, when you can consider that there are very big business enterprises like Reliance or Walmart or Amazon, something like that. They are really very big companies. So for those companies, small inquiries also matter. So you just call up uh, uh, Reliance and just inquired about uh, uh, the Geo uh, SIM card. OK, but although you may not buy that Geo SIM card right now, but still your inquiry will be recorded there. So after some six months, you will get a call suddenly one day from Geo saying that, sir, uh, you did some inquiry some six months back. Are you still interested? Have uh, you guys faced that kind of a situation in your life? Yes. Yes, okay. sir. Why, why are they so keen on you? Just, uh, it is not that you are such a big customer, right? Anyway, you are going to buy a SIM card for some 200 or 300 rupees. That's it. But still, why are they following up on you? Anybody, have you thought about this? We are not a big customer for Geo, right? Every month hardly we will recharge for 500 rupees or 600 rupees. So our, uh, we are not such a big customer, but still they will follow us. If you don't recharge this month, next month they will call you, right? Sir, you have not recharged for last two months. Uh, will you recharge today? So what we need to understand is they are trying to track the sales which they might have lost. So every company will have a database of its own customers and based on that, they will try to produce some forecast saying that this month we will try to achieve a sales volume of some 1 million rupees. But if they don't achieve that, then what would happen? They will try to call up all their customers who did inquiry, who were their regular customers in the past. So you were recharging every month for 500 rupees. Suddenly for two months, you did not recharge. Third month, you will get a call naturally. Sir, why have you not recharged for last two months? Because they have lost the customer. They don't want to have that kind of a situation happening. So they will keep following up on you until you recharge. They will not leave you. So essence of this kind of a follow-up is that they are trying to track on the lost sales. And also, you might have inquired for some product and you just left it. And after some six months, you will get a call saying that, sir, six months back you inquired about this car. So today that car is on demand and still we are giving some discount. This is one of the hottest selling models. So are you still interested? So they are trying to record all these inquiries so that in future, they will have some database kind of so they will have a customer database created so these many customers we have have inquired about our product and so they will have something to work on so without recording your inquiries or quotations what will they work on so they will not have any data so data is more important in today's business scenario so whatever you do it will be recorded so you just simply walk into a store you buy something the next time when you just pass by that store you will have a message saying that in this store today there is a discount going on for all the products will you be interested so how did they know that you passed by that store and how they captured your inquiry you you just inquired once you just visited that store once the next time you did not go even in inside that store you just passed by that store still you will get a message they are tracking you like uh, they are using the latest technologies google is following up wherever you go based on your location it is searching for the nearby places of interest wherever you might have visited in the past and it will try to pull all the information and it will tell you Sir, you visited this restaurant uh, two months back. Uh, now you are near that restaurant. So today they are offering discounts on this. 
so will you be interested something like that so these are all happening even without our intervention so these are all the examples of an inquiry or a quotation and these are the things that i am trying to tell you like see here whatever you see tracking the lost sales recording pre sales data to help negotiate large contracts so pre sales data in the sense you have inquired something right so that is a pre sales data so based on that they will try to negotiate so why if you say that you are not interested then they will say that okay why you are not interested what uh, will make you interest in that product so you will say that uh, your discounts are not deep enough so you give some more discount then i will consider then this kind of negotiation should happen and there are few companies where they wanted to record each and every incident like you get a inquiry they wanted to record it then based on that inquiry you get a quotation they wanted to to be recorded and based on that quotation they get a sales dog, a sales order confirmed they want to record it why do they want to record it or why are they so keen on recording each and every step is because they will have their own set of norms which they will follow so just by recording each and every step in their sales process in the future they will try to build up a big database saying that we have so much million customers and in case if they fare poorly in their sales then they will revisit all these inquiries quotations and then they will try to lure their they try to attract their customers by offering certain discounts and then they will say try to regain some of the market share so this is what ideally happens in today's situation so you can see day in and day out you are getting so many calls right so everyone is interested to sell something to you so this is what happens so they record everything just if you visit a store also they will record it so next time when you go into that store or just pass by the store they will try to tell you that sir today we are having so and so thing so you can visit our store we are having this kind of a uh, 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 discount campaign going on something like that so these are all the importance of having the data recorded so that based on that the sales can be generated so are you clear on this yes sir yes sir. yes sir okay so here uh, these are all the things that you can very well look into your uh, uh, training material like what are the pre sales activities and what are the importance of having the pre sales activity so i will not go much uh, deep into this because uh, whatever i have explained itself is good enough and uh, you can read it through uh, when you find time so so i told you about what information the sales order will contain it will contain customer material information price information delivery dates quantities information about shipping processing and information about billing so to whom you need to raise the invoice to and where do you want to send the material to so that information will automatically come from the customer master so the customer master will have partners right so ship to party is the person who would be receiving the material and bill to party is the one who would be receiving the invoice so all this information will be present inside the sales document so that is what it says so whenever you are trying to order some material there are many multiple possibilities so for example uh, you try to order some product uh, and uh, the product can be readily available in the stock or they has to be manufactured fresh or they can be procured from another vendor and then sold to you so if you for example uh, i think you all might be visiting amazon regularly so in that whenever you visit amazon and you try to order a product you can see that either 
the options would be Amazon already has some stock of that particular product and they will directly send it to you saying that we already have stock we will send it to you next option would be that we do not have stock this needs to be produced for you specially so they produce it and then give it to you and the next option would be they will order this to their vendor or some other supplier and that supplier will send the material to you have you faced this situation Yes. yes, sir. Uh, one time I paid that situation. So this is what is told here. So directly they can send from their stock. If there is no stock of this product available, they will produce it fresh for you and then they will ship it. If that is also not possible, they will ask their vendor or another third party vendor to send it to you on their behalf, on behalf of Amazon. You will have another seller who would be sending it to you, the product to you. So that is what directly from stock or by replenishment from a vendor or by replenishment through one production. So one production means Amazon itself is producing the material and giving it to you. Or they will ask another vendor to send the goods to you. So in that case, Amazon would send a purchase order to that vendor. And based on that purchase order, that vendor will supply the material to you. So this is what happens ideally in a material management scenario. So once a sales order is entered in the system, based on the product what you entered, a plant will get determined in the sales order automatically. So how the plant gets determined in the, in the sales order is another separate topic that we will deal with it separately but at this point you just try to understand that you have created a sales document and inside that you place whatever material uh, you are trying to sell you will create uh, you will add that material and automatically let us assume that the plant got determined against that material so inside that plant the system will search whether the stock for that material is available or not if the stock is available, they will confirm the delivery date and the material will be sent out to you. In case if the stock is not there, then there are two, op two options. One, they will produce the stock or they will try to supply it through another vendor. So these two possibilities are there. So this is what happens whenever you create a sales document. The system immediately checks inside the sales order based on the sales order it will go and check in the plant whether how the product can be supplied you clear on this mm, yes sir. okay <clears throat> so now once the delivery is uh, once the order is created now we have saved that uh, sales order so then what happens the system decides that uh, uh, the material let us assume that uh, the material is already available in stock so once the stock is already available then the system will propose a delivery date for you so the sales order we see a uh, field called requested delivery date or rdd so what does that delivery date mean is that that is the date on which the customer expects the goods to be with them. So they expect to receive the goods on that particular date. So if you are able to meet that particular date, then we create a delivery document. So first process is the sales document. So until here we have in the process of the first two is the pre-sales and this is the sales order you created based on the pre-sales activities. Now, what is the use of having a just a sales order created? You need to ship the material to your customer, right? So you ordered some product on Amazon. Amazon has sent you an order confirmation saying that so-and-so material is ordered by you. So we thank you for the order and this is the value of the order. Fine. 
So, is it okay if they only send you the order confirmation? Is it okay, what, sir? <clears throat> no, no. Let us, no, no. Let us assume that uh, you are ordering a mobile phone on Amazon. Okay. Mm. Yes. Is it okay. Only if they send the order confirmation without sending no. the product. No, sir. No. Are you that possible? No. They they just send an order confirmation and they say that boss we have sent the order confirmation. That is not uh, completing the process, right? So they have to send that material to you, correct? Yes. So whatever we have seen until now is only until the order. Now the next step is the logistics part of this. So we need to send the material to the customer. Otherwise, what is the use of creating the order, right? So the next logistics step starts with delivery creation. Now delivery document is another document that gets created. So now, so far we have seen three documents. One is inquiry, another is quotation, and another is a sales document. Now, the next document what we are seeing, going to see is the delivery document. So now, how you create a delivery document? It is not definitely a standalone document. We need to refer to the sales order and we need to create a delivery document. So delivery document, why is it really required? Why can't we live with this sales order only? Uh, have you thought about this? So we have created a sales document. So is it not enough that we live with that sales document? Why do we need a delivery document? So usually uh, what happens in real time business scenarios is that we need to inform the customer that the so-and-so material is being shipped to you and you will be receiving the goods in some 24 hours or 36 hours or whatever it may be or within five days or 10 days something like that so it is essential that we inform the customer about this otherwise the customer will think that uh, they have you have created the sales order but no sign of material so what will the customer think that Okay, this guy is only created the order. He's not shipping the product. So he may be some fake company. So something like that. The customer may think like that. So how will they know that you are taking steps to deliver the material to them? So just to inform customer that this particular material is being shipped to them on so and so uh, right. So if, for example, if uh, you ordered something on Amazon, you ordered a mobile phone and Amazon has sent you an order confirmation. And after some one day, they will say that, uh, sir, your consignment is uh, shipped out via, uh, via this uh, blue dot courier number, so and so, so and so. So you need to have that information. So then they will also say, if you want to track your request, you can go into this website and you can track your request. So then you will be at least somewhat happy that uh, Amazon has uh, sent the material and you will be receiving the material in certain period of time. So essentially here what has happened is the customer is being informed via the delivery document that the so and so process has been initiated. The shipment process is initiated. So that is what it means. Okay. Are you clear on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. How about others? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Fine. So now delivery creation happens based on sales document. So you can refer to that sales document and create a delivery document. So what are the information that will be present in the delivery document? It will have the ship to party. So ship to party is the person who will be receiving the uh, ship to party is the person who receives the goods. Then it will have information about the material quantity then any other special instructions like 
for example if you have ordered some product which is uh, very uh, delicate or uh, a, it is a very special product or something which they need to handle with care for example uh, you ordered uh, some uh, what to say um, a product which is made out of glass okay so that has to be handled with care because it is a very fragile product it can break so any special instructions during the packing they need to provide some in, in special instructions saying that um, this is a fragile product uh, please handle with care or something of that sort they need to mention so that is kind of special instructions that we can place it inside the delivery document and uh, along with that what else information you will have so once you create the delivery process or the you initiate the delivery document creation based on that delivery document there are certain processes that will happen within the business like within the plant or within the warehouse where the material is present so for example uh, you you received a uh, you placed an order for a particular product and uh, for certain quantity so once the order is created and once the material is ready uh, the business they will create a delivery document so based on this delivery document certain processes needs to happen within that plant before that material is being shipped to you so what are those processes that will happen based on this delivery document so they will need to for example let us consider that your product is uh, stored in a very big warehouse so like amazon warehouse so they need to specifically take the material from the location where it is placed and they will need to then pack that material and once they pack they need to put it in the truck or in any other courier service from where the delivery will be happening so these kind of processes will happen inside the warehouse or the plant based on the delivery document that got created so this is what is told here so picking and confirming via transfer orders so what does this picking mean picking means essentially your material needs to be picked up from a particular location inside the plant or the warehouse so the material whatever you are ordering it will be present inside the warehouse like uh, let us assume that you have ordered for a mobile phone and there will be a warehouse where your mobile phone will be present so it will inside the warehouse will not be very small uh, as you uh, imagine it will be a very big location so inside that warehouse they need to specifically locate where the product which you ordered is found so they will go to that particular location and pick the material from there so that is the process of picking so that is also done electronically based on your delivery document so based on the delivery document what you created the system will go and it will search for the material there and they will perform the picking operation so once the delivery gets created the processes that follows based on the delivery is picking first step would be to pick the material the material range location is it plant plant or warehouse once the material is picked then they need to pack the material once they pack it then they will need to uh, transport planning and monitoring so either they need to plan the transportation like in which courier they have to send it or in which uh, freight service they have to use which logistic service provider they have to use whether they can use uh, dhl or in case if it is a very big consignment 
they will use a container whether they will use merk container or whatsoever it may be so based on that they will design so that is what is meant by transportation planning so transport planning will happen based on that once the transport planning is done then they will hand over the material to that courier company or to the logistic service provider so that handing over the consignment is called post goods issue okay so you are are you able to visualize this scenario in your mind yes Yes, we have to yes, go step by step. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Any any doubts or queries you have? No. Okay. No, sir. Uh, sir, as it is written regarding the out outbound delivery, so mm -hmm. so, uh, so can we gonna uh, go into detail into that or uh, in some other topic we will be clearing? Where? Uh. A uh, second line. Yeah. Creation right. of out, creation of outbound delivery. Ha, huh, there also. Yeah, delivery is outbound delivery only. There are two kind of deliveries. Okay, so here, whenever you try to sell the material, okay, uh, the delivery what you create is an outbound delivery because the material is moving out of your premises, right? Okay. So we call it as an outbound delivery. whenever you are raising a purchase order and you are trying to buy some material in that case against that purchase order the delivery that gets created is an inbound delivery because you are trying to get the material into your place okay so is there any standard document type for it as like quotation yes. says order yes yes i will be telling you so okay outbound delivery is what is get created whenever you are trying to sell the material or send the material out of your plant so if i say delivery it it is understood that it is an outbound delivery because we are only focusing on sales scenarios we are not uh, discussing anything about the procurement or purchase scenarios so whatever scenarios we discuss is specific to sales so it is always an outbound delivery that we are referring here so when you say outbound delivery there are certain standard uh, uh, document type that will be used delivery uh, document type in standard we use ls ls is the delivery document type that we will be used to represent the outbound delivery so this delivery will get created based on the sales document e each and every document that you create in sap will be usually created with reference to the preceding document so what is the first document you created it is the inquiry now you have that inquiry you refer that inquiry and you create a quotation now you created the quotation now when you want to create a sales order you refer that quotation and create the sales order now you created the sales order now you refer that sales order and create a delivery now based on that delivery document we perform certain processes we pick the material we pack the material then we plan the transportation then we send the material to the customer so that is the posting the goods issue so once you post the goods issue for a particular outbound delivery it means that the material is already handed over to the logistic service provider or to the courier company whatever you call it so after you did the post goods issue process then you need to invoice the customer so again a invoice will be created by referring to this outbound delivery so in every stage of the document creation we always need to refer to the previous document and create the subsequent document so what is the uh, logic behind referring to the previous documents and creating subsequent documents is yes, because 
see you we created an inquiry for some customer x for some product a b c like let us assume that there is a customer called x and he is interested in product a b c now you raise the quote uh, inquiry now when you attempt to create a quotation you can create a direct quotation without referring also but when you create a document by referring to the previous document the system directly copies all the information from the inquiry into the quotation it will copy the customer it will copy the material it will copy the quantity everything it just copies from the previous document into the current document so what happens is you will not have the pain of again entering those data you don't need to enter those data again manually and also it will avoid any kind of error so instead of entering customer x by mistake if you can enter customer y then the total scenario changes right so it is always advisable that you copy an existing document and create a new document so you created a delivery now based on that delivery only you, you need to create an invoice because you cannot create an invoice stand alone right so you need something to copy and create against which you will create an invoice so you already did the delivery then you need to raise an invoice for the material what you have supplied and to the customer whom you have supplied so in that case without referring to the uh, delivery document if you try to create an invoice definitely that that will not work so you you always need to refer to the previous document and then create the subsequent document that is the usual procedure so when we try to create the documents uh, then you will try to understand how that happens okay Uh, yes, sir. theoretically we uh, got your answers, but uh, uh, in terms of T codes, uh, can you please explain which kind of T codes will be involved for the quotation sales order and the outbound deliveries? Yes. So let me first complete this cycle till billing. Okay. 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 Sure. So next process is billing document creation. So. once you did the post goods issue that means that the document is now ready to be invoiced so you have handed over the material to the courier company or to the logistics service provider so once it is done that means that now you can invoice your customer so invoicing essentially means you are raising the billing document so billing document creation here billing document type standard in standard we use f2 is the billing document type and inside this we will have information about payer the person who is responsible for making the payment information about the material quantity will be present here yeah. so once the billing document is generated okay so after the distribution process has been completed so what is it mean by distribution process is the logistics process so the logistics uh, process ends with posting the goods issue so once the uh, goods issue is posted it will end the logistics process because the consignment is already handed over to the courier or the logistics uh, service provider so after that the document becomes eligible for invoicing so that is what is mentioned here so now you can uh, create a billing document by referring to the delivery document so the billing document has several important functions so uh, the billing document uh, will help you to monitor the Uh, customer's payment without uh, billing document you cannot go and ask uh, your customer to make the payment right so when you visit any uh, 
mall or uh, any uh, departmental store or supermarket you purchase some product okay then uh, the store cannot ask you uh, the money without giving you the invoice or without giving you the billing document right just like that they cannot say sir please pay me 100 rupees you will then ask where is the bill how you you are saying that i need to pay 100 rupees so you record that in a statement he has purchased so and so product so and so quantity and this is the price all these products whatever you have purchased they will scan it and they will generate the billing document and then they will give it to you based on that you make the payment so billing document essentially serves as a base for the customer to make the payment so whenever a billing document gets generated inside the system there will be some kind of activities that will be happening inside the background in the background uh, of the system there will be something that would be happening from a finance uh, perspective not from sales perspective but from a finance perspective so there will be some kind of a debit postings some kind of a credit postings which which will happen so what is those kind of a posting so what is a debit posting what is the credit posting that happens when you create the billing document so whenever you create a billing document what would happen you are going to receive the money okay it means that you are uh, you are you will be having a separate account revenue account so in the revenue account there will be a credit posting that will be rec recorded because you are going to receive the money from the customer and it is a revenue for you so a credit posting will happen on the revenue account and a debit will happen on the customer's account because customer is supposed to pay right so there will be an account maintained for the customer and that customer there will be a debit posting because the customer has to pay that money so these two things will happen in the background whenever you create a invoice so after you created the invoice based on that invoice whenever the customer makes the payment we are required to record the payment so we are essentially required to record this payment against the invoice so whatever invoice you generated for some 1000 rupees customer has made some payment of 1000 rupees then we need to electronically record the incoming payment so at that point of time what happens the customer has already made the payment so the incoming payment from the customer is recorded within the accounting department essentially this is not a part of the sales process but still we are required to know that what are the changes in the system that would happen whenever the incoming payment is made so whenever an incoming payment is made the data on the relevant general ledger accounts there will be separate accounts maintained inside sap they are called the general ledger accounts uh, to record these kind of activities so there will be a general ledger account maintained for the customers receivable there will be a general ledger account maintained for the revenue account there will be a general ledger account maintained for cash uh, cash payments so all these kind of general ledger accounts will be maintained this is a, a more of a finance concept which i am talking now you don't need to worry that uh, if you are not able to follow up on this because this is a purely a finance related concept so these kind of general ledger accounts will be maintained in the system and whenever you make some payment or whenever you create an invoice the postings would happen in those general ledger accounts according to the kind of transaction that happens so when you record or when you create a billing document the general ledger account gets updated according to that like a debit happens on the customers receivable account and a credit happens on the revenue account so when the incoming payment is made by the customer the reverse will happen because the payment is already made so then the credit will happen on the customers receivables account and a debit will happen on the cash account or the revenue so the reverse will happen whenever the customer makes the payment so there are two things which you need to understand here one is the first part is creating the invoice document so once the invoice document is created our responsibility does not stop there we need to 
wait until the customer makes the payment and we need to record that payment as well so that this transaction gets completed. So our cycle is called an order to cash cycle. So and from the order until receipt of cash, this entire flow we need to monitor with these documents. So that is the what to say the summary of the sales and distribution process. So sales and distribution essentially starts with inquiry. Then you create the quotation, then you create the sales document, then you create the delivery and you do the processes within the delivery document. You create the picking process, you do the packing, then you do the shipment process like transportation planning, then you do the posting the goods issue. These happens within the delivery document. Then once the goods issue is posted, you create an invoice. After, once you create the invoice, still this is not closed until you receive the incoming payment from the customer. So once you receive the payment from the customer, then only the entire cycle ends. So until that time, <coughs> it is very much essential that we record all these uh, steps inside the sales and distribution process. So here you can see the summary. So what are the documents uh, that happen within the pre-sales and what are the standard uh, document types uh, which is forming part of the order process and then what is the delivery process and then what is the goods issue and then what is the billing document. So any doubts uh, from anyone on this process we discussed so far? No, sir. No about others? Clear. Okay. Vivek, you are clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Just give me a minute, please. I'll be back. Ah, Kuldeep, hello. Ah, uh, hello. Ah, to kill a carriage of science, Kalkan. What's the third of us? Detail with the Bagala class. Yes, I am at the Yoda. I use some other than the master data. Sakalza. As long as you put up on the number, the wise carols, I'm sure to the Rikada portion of the Nusil. Cassata, Mr. Andersakaribo looking at Sir Ami Yoda, good listeners name and like some Rama to speed a mass name of the one like Punsa. The Tula Hotas and match maybe twice and a little better surrounding. Sarang <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, guys, uh, uh, before we move further, so everybody you are able to access SAP server without any issues. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. All, all five of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you are able to understand the navigation within SAP system, right? All good, sir. Yes. Okay, good. Nice to hear. So let us now move ahead and uh, try to look at the transactions that uh, we would be using inside this uh, processes. Okay.
<coughs> so you are able to see my screen, right? Okay, so now if we go to this logistics, sales and distribution, sales, here you have inquiry, quotation, order. So now when you want to create an inquiry, you can go here and use this option to create. Now before that, uh, let me enable the transaction codes. So, logistics, sales and distribution, sales, inquiry. So, these are the transaction codes that are associated with inquiry. So, now if you want to create an inquiry, you can go to V11 and you can give inquiry IN. You can give sales or, for example, 1000. You can give some sold to. Let me check any inquiries that are created already in the system. So you can always go to AC16N, which is the data browser. If you want to check for any sales documents that are already existing, you can use VBAK table. And inside VBAK, you can put your restrictions created on. You can give some date first of june 2021 until september range. so sales document type you can give in we are, we are now interested to check what are the inquiries that are already available in the system so we don't have anything so i done the search so we have anything Remove this. We have only two inquiries created so far. Let me execute this. One was created in 2009 and another on 2004. So let us see how they look like. So now we want to display the inquiry. So we can use VA13 to display the inquiry. We will see how this looks like and what sold to and shipped to they have used. We will also use the same. So PO number, we will give some test underscore today's date. What material, this is the material. So we will see whether we have any other material. Okay. Okay. This material is not extended to our sales org. So whenever first time you are trying to execute the system will take some time to compile everything. So it is saying there is a communication error with the external tag system. So there are some interfaces which they have activated with other systems. So there is a communication failure for that. So if you want to check if your document is complete, go to edit, check incompletion log. So the, it says that the document is complete. So all the essential fields are filled in. Yesterday, if you remember, I discussed about this concept of incompleteness. So if any of the fields are not complete, the system will not allow further process of this. So here in this situation, if you want to check any document, if it is complete or not, you can go to edit, select incompletion log. It will tell you whether the document is complete or it is incomplete. If it is incomplete, it will pop up the window where you can see what are the fields that are rendering this document as incomplete. Now, this document is complete. 
so we can save this in query sir uh, can, <clears throat> could you pl uh, please give me the example of incomplete and how it looks like with uh, this one hmm so now in query what we have created is saved so it is generated it has generated the number this is a system generated number so now we have this inquiry created now i will come to your uh, thing vivek just let me first complete this yes sir sure so now we can go to change mode if we go to va12 which is a change mode you can give your document number it will open in change mode on the other hand if you go on display it will open in display mode so this is about creating an inquiry so now for example coming back to vivek let us now try to create a inquiry again now for example now let us see that we have not maintained the quantity okay now there is no quantity let us check how the incompletion looks like it still it says the document is complete why because the quantity field is not added into into the incompletion procedure so that's the reason why it is still showing as complete now i remove this all there is no material still if it is showing as incomplete still it is showing the document as complete so it means essentially that the incompleteness procedure is not configured with all these fields so when we add all these fields whichever you feel that needs to be completed then when those fields are not complete then the system will throw an incompletion error so unfortunately uh, vivek in this case these yes, fields yeah. are not added into the incompleteness procedure so mm -hmm. that's the reason why you are not able to see them okay Yes, maybe sir. when we come to sales order i can show you a clear example okay yes sir and uh, one more thing which i want to tell you that uh, that tab uh, that vba ke tab means so you go through those tabs mm. uh, could you please open this the tab mm. uh, and sir uh, at the top bar what code you entered to go through this vba ke tab you need to use transaction fe16n we call this as a data browser transaction data browser okay. data browser okay and data browser okay yeah you enter it will ask you for which table you want to look at okay mm. sales yeah. documents will be stored in this vba ke table okay. means only, only sales documents are saved in vba ke table want to check delivery document you need to put likp table if you go to likp table delivery documents will be stored in this table sir how do we get that code uh, means vba ke lik And that comes only by practice uh, oh, you need yeah. to you need to learn uh, sir uh, are they mentioned in the book uh, also book uh, there will be mentioned somewhere uh, maybe you can go into some standard uh, 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 you can check uh, in the book somewhere they will uh, they would have mentioned inside the data browser section or what you can do is uh, you can go to Mm. Uh, google and you can search for the standard uh, tables in uh, sap sd okay okay let me take a note uh, standard tables mm. in sap sd all right 
So if you put that in the search in the Google, then it will give the list of tables which you can use. So for sales document, there are many tables, not only VBAK. VBAK is just a header table. Now we will have item table. We will have a, a schedule line table like that. Similarly, for delivery, we will have LIKP, which is a header table, and LIPS, which is the item table. Then if you want to search for any billing documents, you need to go for VBRK table. Likewise, there are tables for both master data as well as transactional data. These are the tables for transactional data. For master data, customer master also, we have tables. So if you go to KNA1, which is the general data of the customer master, that you can see here. If you go to KNVV, this will be the sales uh, data for the uh, customer master. Then if you go to KNVB, sorry. Uh, company code, it will have another table. Likewise, uh, mm, so partner details will be stored in this table. Likewise, there are many uh, tables. <coughs> if you want to go to material master, if you want to check the uh, general data, you can go to MARA, M-A-R-A table. If you want to check for the plant level data, you can go to M-A-R-C. If you want to check sales area data for materials, you can use M-V-K-E. So these are the tables which prominently or uh, most frequently we will be using to check the data inside the customer, inside the system. Because every time you cannot go to the transaction and uh, search for this. You can go to the table and you can pull the data, whatever you want. Mm, yes, yes. So if you want to look for some materials to use, what you can do, go to MARA. Then you can restrict the entry to five. Or if you want to know how many entries exist in the system, then you can click on number of entries. So there are 17,764 materials have been created. Yes. So now if you want to pull some material, if you click execute, all the 17,764 will be displayed and it will take some time. So you want to only see some five materials, put the maximum number of hits as five. And if you execute, it will display only five materials. So these are the five materials. Now you can use these five materials for your testing purpose or for data creation. Similarly, if you want to check for customers, so you can go to a A1 table and you can search uh, number of entries. If you click, it says there are 8510 customers created. Now, if you want to look at some five customers only, put their five, execute, it will bring you some five customers randomly. So if you want to have 500 customers, you want to look, put here 500 and execute it will bring up all the 500 customers. So if you want to restrict based on certain things, like you want to restrict based on customers created for US country, then you can put country as US and you can search. All the customers created for US will show here. So you can judiciously use this based on your discretion and you can fetch the data whatever you want and you can see. Okay. Okay. So now we have created our inquiry. Are we good to move further? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. So now we have created our inquiry. So now let us refer this inquiry and create a quotation. So now we have this inquiry. So you can copy this inquiry number. You can put control C, you have copied this. Now, what is the transaction code to create a quotation? Go to logistics, uh, sales and distribution, sales, quotation. VA21 is to create quotation. VA22 is to change quotation. VA23 is to display quotation. So now we are going to create quotation. Select this, double click. Now, what is the quotation type? I told QT. 
now can remove this and remove this now we can go and click on create with reference now you are trying to create a quotation with reference to inquiry so you select this tab inquiry and put your inquiry number here and click on copy now the system is copying the inquiry into quotation now errors have occurred See, this is the incompletion log. Now, quotation value 2 is not present. So, this is what uh, you wanted to see, right? Vivek? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you can click on complete data. So, if you click on complete data, valid from valid 2. So, valid from automatically to pick today's date. So, valid 2 is not complete. So, we will put valid 2 as until end of this month. So now, if I want to click here, it will complete our data. Now, it is not copied the material. We will put the material. Okay, we will put test 10. See, now, whenever we attempted to copy, there was an option. I'm not saving this. I want to show you something else. So now, for example, here, uh, you put create with reference and you put your inquiry. And here, something called an item selection. So what does it mean is in your inquiry, if you have some multiple lines, some 10 lines or 20 lines in your inquiry, in item, I mean. So in this inquiry, you have only uh, one line item, only one line item you have here. So let us assume that you have some 20 lines here. So which are the lines that you wanted to copy and create quotation? So when that kind of a flexibility you want to have, you can go and click on item selection so this will automatically select this so it will select this item whichever items for example if there are some five line items all the five will come so whichever you tick that will be copied and that you can select and you can copy so there is some error that is happening which is not allowing the system to copy so we need to check that So you got my point, right? What is the use of this item selection? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Now what <coughs> you, do, you can create with reference. You can go to item selection. This will come here. So now you you created an inquiry was created for 10 piece, but now you are copying only five piece. That also is possible. You want to change the quantity to five. Then you click on copy. There is some error is happening. Date 49 is after end of factory calendar US. Okay. Hmm. Okay, no problem. Let us do one thing. Create.
Okay, let us use this inquiry. Now let us attempt to create a quotation. Sir, uh, hmm. how we are copying that inquiry code means we go through display and then. Sorry? Uh, how you uh, got that? Inquiry code means inquiry reference number Hello. that we copied before. You can go to display transaction VA 23 and then from there you can copy it. Whenever what happens is whenever you create a document, the next immediately whenever you go to change or display transaction, that last inquiry what you created will only come there. So uh, whenever uh, you created an inquiry, there will be a message which comes at the bottom saying that inquiry so and so has been created. Either you double click on that message, it will open up a window where you can copy the inquiry or you next immediately you go to VA 12 or VA 13. Only that number will come there. See for example, now I created an inquiry, right? I created an inquiry. Now, next immediately, if I go to change mode, only the last created inquiry will come here. Did you understand? Yes, sir. And then um, you can go and copy that. <coughs> here. Now, now you are trying to create quotation. Create with reference to this inquiry. Now go to item selection. You select this item. Now, instead of 10, you want to create quotation only for 5, let us assume. Go to copy. And again, there is some issue. Uh, it's after the end of subject calendar. Sir, we are creating sales order. No? We are creating a, a quotation now. Quotation. Okay, I will try to fix this issue today. Then maybe we will. I will show you without this error. But at this point of time, you can try to understand how to copy that. Okay. Now okay. let us try to put in, and I have check the incompletion log. This is quotation missing valid two. I have completed the valid. Now I have saved this. Now if you observe that you can see quotation two double zero triple zero nine eight has been saved. Okay. Now you can double click on this. It will open this window. Here you can go and copy this number or else if you miss this, then you can go here. If you go to either change or display, the last created document number will appear automatically. Okay. Yeah. Now you created this quotation. Now you want to create a sales order referring to this quotation. Now, what is the transaction to create a sales order? Now let us go to the main AC access screen. Go to logistics. Sales and distribution, sale, order. Go to VA01. Now, here you can use standard sales document type or 
create with reference. Now it is already moved to this quotation. So now you can put your quotation here. Click on copy. Here also we are having the same issue. I will fix it and let you know. Just for the time being, let us. Otherwise, it will automatically it would have populated the material in quantity here. If the error doesn't come. So continue. Question zero is not defined for fiscal year 2021. Zero is not defined. Okay, there is some error which is happening. Okay, let us try to search for some standard. Uh, we need to fix this uh, issue to proceed further, guys. Mm, maybe I will check and fix this today. And then maybe I can show you tomorrow. You can try this with our uh, last yesterday. Sorry. You our credentials. You can try this. With anything, this will maybe in that system uh, it may work. Uh, just give me some uh, two minutes, I will be back. Okay. तू काल रिकॉर्ड करता ना माइक बंद ठोले दान तुझे मत चालू होते चालू बंद ही चालू बंद होता है हाँ मंचे रेगुलर आपन बोले तो चालू करते तो सब पक्का इधर वाइज बंद होता ना ऐसे कहीं नहीं हाँ वो इधर वाइज बंद होता कवर नहीं होता तो ना हाँ मग रिकॉर्ड होता ना बता सब ना सभी चार दिन है हाँ � समझाए कर क्रिएट किया लेते तो आउटपुट आउटपुट बन जाए अतः कैसा अपन कोटेशन बनो तो तो से ये तक कैसा 
आज करू सौरभ अकरावा युनिट च काही डाऊट असेल त्याला विचारू त्याला विचारायचंय मला टास्क टू चा डाऊट त्याच्यात चार टास्क होते आता बघू ना आता सेशन संपल्यावर विचार करून लेट मी चेक दी अदर ऑप्शन I think sir you need to go with the more choices uh uh-huh. uh separate I think you're using separate your t course I guess ओके नाउ लेट अस फोकस ऑन क्रिएटिंग ऑन इंक्वायरी सर परचेस ऑर्डर नंबर नीडेड इज इट मैंडेटरी ड्यूरिंग द इंक्वायरी बट इफ द सिस्टम रिक्वायर्स इट एज एन इनकंप्लीशन देन वी मेक इट बट जस्ट 
for understanding sake i have updated it will allow you even without pv also okay so now in completion log the document is complete so let us save this inquiry now we got this inquiry generated now let us copy that inquiry number slash o qt create with reference to this inquiry in selection you can copy this and then you can see now when we copy the material and quantity is also copied now we'll check if anything is complete yes quotation valid 2 needs to be completed complete data so let us make it so we can click on this then the document is now complete now we are saving it now we got this quotation generated now let us attempt to create a sales order or create with reference to quotation item selection no copy you know it got created let's check for in completion here enter po number it's just a warning it's not an error so let us try to enter some po number here Now the document is complete. We can save. Now we have created this standard sales order one five zero six seven. Now when we try to display this, this will look like here. Now we have this option display document flow. If you click this, you can see the preceding documents. So you can see the inquiry here. You can see the quotation. then you can see the order so this is a document flow now we can go to any document you can select and if you go and display document that document will get displayed now you can go back you can select inquiry also you can click on display document it will display the inquiry same way you can go back you can now create select the this is the standard sales order which got created for this requested delivery date so this is the date on which the customer expects the material to be available for them any doubts so far from anyone no sir okay yeah we wait sir every time we have to uh, copy that from the tab instead of copy we, we just uh, click on that uh, right tick mark and then system will copy it automatically or not uh which one you are saying vivek uh right before uh, that materials and all the things you see that's what time telling you right now uh, for example you are creating one sales order now what you wanted to know is create with reference we give the quotation number here you are yes. saying if we put this itself is it fine you are saying right yeah means we we go through item selection first and then copy no need no need you can put just copy also it will copy but why you have item selection is that's the reason i told you in the quotation for example if you have 10 line items you want to create order only for five line items then you go to item selection and select the lines for which you want to create the order and deselect other okay sir okay got it okay so that that is applicable only when you have multiple lines for which uh, out of those multiple lines uh, if you intend to create uh, a document uh, uh, only for some five or six of them 
then you can go to item selection that is just a flexibility which the system has given you you can just go into copy and copy everything and inside the sales order also you can delete them that is not a problem but this is an additional feature which the system has provided you all right sir okay go on okay so you are clear right yes sir absolutely now we created the sales order now we are displaying the sales order here now you see what is the requested delivery date here you see what is the plant here so you can select here and you can check the schedule lines also so if you go and select this this will display the schedule line so here you can see the requested delivery date is 24 and the confirmed quantity is 10 pieces so this order is confirmed so you see the quantity in the confirmed quantity tab it means that it is confirmed now the next step is you want to create a delivery for this in order to create delivery yesterday i remember having told you that we need to have a shipping point to create the delivery because shipping point the delivery gets created for a shipping point so to know what shipping point is used in the order you can double click on this line go to shipping tab here you can see the shipping point is 1200 so this is the shipping point which got determined so now let us attempt to create a delivery document for this so when you want to create a delivery document you go to logistics go to logistics execution outbound process this is an outbound process because you are trying to send the material out of your system now sorry Here itself, you can go to shipping and transportation, outbound delivery. Want to create outbound delivery as a single document VL01N. You can use with reference to sales order. Now you have a sales order, so you can refer that and you can create a delivery. So double click on this transaction VL01N. Here you need to input some data. So what shipping point? we are going to use for delivery creation what is the selection date so what is the delivery date so it has to be 24 so that is the requested delivery date right so you put the date you put the order number press enter the system is now creating the delivery date delivery so you can go and save this just save now delivery 8012012 has been saved now same ways if we go here and put display you will have this number so you can press enter you are now displaying the delivery document which you created you can go and click on the document flow now inside the document flow you now one more document got added now you got the delivery created now once the delivery got created the order is now status turned into completed so now the delivery got created and it is in open status now this delivery has to be processed so what and all we need to use to process this first we need to update the picking quantity so here you see that wm transfer order required because there is a warehouse number that is updated so warehouse management transfer order required so this is the next step that you need to follow uh, please pay more attention in this part why because there are two kinds of activities that are possible one is warehouse managed activity another is inventory managed activity so based on your setup in case if your setup is a warehouse managed setup then you might need to create some more documents for the picking process if your process is not warehouse managed then you don't need to create any kind of documents for picking process just to go to the change mode of the delivery and update the picked quantity same as the delivery quantity manually here you see the picked quantity field is grayed out why because 
it will be updated only based on warehouse management transfer orders so warehouse management transfer orders needs to be created to perform the picking operation in case if here you see the warehouse management overall status here if you see the status as blank and no warehouse number populated then it means that this is not controlled by warehouse it is just an inventory managed setup and here the field will be available for you to update the delivery quantity same as pick quantity so now here you see it is a warehouse management managed setup so in case of this warehouse managed setup what you need to do is you can go to subsequent functions create transfer order okay select end of dialog do you want to switch subsequent functions yes now here you see them some data that is needed to be filled up to create the transfer order transfer order essentially what means what is meant by transfer order is now inside the warehouse you need to perform certain operations like picking the material from one location and you need to place it in another location so that the packing can happen and then the goods issue can happen so this process of picking the material within the warehouse from one location to another is controlled by this transfer order document so this is essentially a document which will be controlling the movement of material within the warehouse so inside the warehouse if you want to move the material from one place to another place so for example if it is placed in a particular storage location and you cannot perform the packing or goods issue from that storage location you need to pick the material from that location and bring it to another location so that you can perform the packing and the goods issue can happen from that place or example you can consider your material is placed inside the warehouse you need to bring the material from there until the door of the warehouse so from there you can load it into the truck so that process of bringing the material from inside the warehouse to the place where you can send the material out of your warehouse this movement of material within the warehouse is controlled by this transfer order are you clear hello uh, yes, yes sir can you please repeat once again repeat from the now. delivery yes see delivery you have created now okay once you created the delivery you are clear until delivery creation right yes sir. yes okay everyone clear yes sir okay so now you have created the delivery you have to actually imagine certain things for example you have a big warehouse okay you have created a delivery document for a particular material now that material is present inside the warehouse now you want to load that you have to pack that material and then you have to load it into the truck so that the delivery logistics can happen because if you want to bring the material or if you want to ship the material they have to bring it to the door of the warehouse right correct everyone yes sir that mm. you agree right yes, so it is placed somewhere inside the warehouse so let us assume the warehouse is some 500 meters long and there will be many doors in the warehouse from where you can load the material into the truck so you need to bring your material from one point inside the warehouse until that door so without a document how you can bring that material from that location to this location so we need some documents which governs the movement of material within the warehouse this is just a warehouse movement within the warehouse you are moving the material from one location to another location so we need to have a document which specifies from which location to which location you are moving the material so that document is called a transfer order clear clear okay 
so now when you are trying to create a transfer order for a particular delivery note so transfer orders will be created for a particular delivery note now you created a delivery note and for that delivery note you are creating this transfer order so that you can move that material from one point in the warehouse to another point and from that point it will enable the shipment of material so now the plant what we are using is 1200 and this is the delivery document which we got created now you update that and press enter now this is the transfer order that is getting created now you click on generate to item now the to item got generated now you can save this if you save this what will happen is the system will post the transfer order so for example now we save this so it says that the transfer order 5000005171 created now you can go here and you can confirm the transfer order because we once only when you confirm the transfer order it will mean that the movement is complete so now if you click on confirm transfer order so this is what a transfer order confirmation so here you have the confirmation means pick plus transfer so you are picking the material from that location and you are transferring it into another location so you can click on standard so now what message you got the transfer order is already confirmed or cancelled or cancellation sent essentially what happens is whenever you create a transfer order there are two options either you confirm it automatically or confirm it manually based on certain configuration settings in the background so in this case the transfer order confirmation is already set automatic so that is the reason the system says that the transfer order is already confirmed that's why you are not able to confirm it so if you want to display this transfer order you can go you can see now now whatever i told you you can imagine this is the fixed bin storage so from this storage location i i remember having told you what is storage location is these are locations inside the plant so in this plant when you see this plant you have this warehouse 012 and inside this warehouse you have this location 0005 and from that location the material is now moved to 916 location what is this 916 location it is shipping area so shipping area means the place from where the shipment can happen so essentially this transfer order what it has done it has moved the material from 005 to 916 location so what is 916 location 916 is a shipping area location so shipping area essentially means the place from where the shipment will essentially happen guys are you clear yes sir means uh, every time we have to create and transfer order yes if if the warehouse transfer order is required in that status in the delivery document okay in the delivery the in the delivery document here in the picking you see warehouse number if you see the warehouse number here updated then you need to create a transfer order if you don't see any warehouse number and here you see no transfer order required status here then you don't need to create a transfer order just manually you can update picked quantity same as the delivery quantity okay yes sir so now you have completed the transfer order now you you see the status earlier it was a now it is turned to c c means c. it is fully picked picked in the sense the material is already moved from 005 completed. location to 916 uh, location so it is now ready to be shipped out okay yes sir yes okay now you have now picked this material now let us perform the next process so the next process either you can go and do the packing so here you have the button for packing 
you click on this tracking. So now you select this line item. This is the line which needs to be packed. So once you select this line and you click on pack this button, if you click, the system is asking whether the system has to search for the packaging material. So this is the material M05 which you are going to ship. But when you want to pack it, it has to be packed in another material, right? Like a cardboard or a pallet or a carton, something. So the system is asking you whether it should search for the packaging material to pack this material. Then you give yes. The system has come up with so many packing materials. So which material you want to use to pack this, you can select. So now you wanted to pack this material in this carton. For example, box, carton box. Now you selected the packing material. Now it says that this material is not, uh, the packaging material is not sufficient to hold this quantity. So what we can do, we can select another material, another packaging material. Right. Now you can go back, go back. Now need to save. No select. Sorry. <clears throat> Back. Now you select this. System search for more packaging material. Okay. So what is essentially happened here is this is the packaging material which we selected and inside this packaging material our material is now packed and it has created so many handling units. So we we had a 10 quantity of our material. So it has split the weight accordingly and it has packed all these materials and created 19 handling units for this 10 material, 10 quantity, it has created these many handling unit. So essentially what a handling unit is, whenever you assign your material to a packaging material, the resultant product is called the handling unit. In, in layman's terms, let us imagine that you are trying to purchase a mobile phone. So mobile phone is the material, okay? Now you are packing that mobile phone inside a carton or inside a small box. So once you put that mobile phone into a cardboard box, then that resulting product is called the handling unit. You need to imagine it in that way. So this 10 quantity of M05 material, when it is packed in the packaging material T-Z501, Z5401, it has created handling units. So many handling units it has created. So inside these handling units, you can see how the material is packed. You can see what is the weight of that, what is the um, handling units it has proposed. So if you don't want to have this many handling units, you can cancel this. Select. Okay. This is insufficiently packed, so.
Okay. Now we selected a different packaging material and it created one handling unit wherein you can see the entire quantity is packed in this material and the resultant uh, handling unit generated is this one. This is the handling unit which got generated when we assigned our material to this packaging material. So now we can save this transaction which means that the packing is completed. Now when you go and select the document flow, now you can see further documents come created. So after this delivery, it got created with the transfer order. That transfer order is also completed. Now we created the packing. Now the handling unit got generated. The delivery is still in being processed state because we are still not done the goods issue. Are you clear until this, guys? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, but I think, can you please give just a simple overview from delivery to the packing? Just a quick overview. Because see, uh, there uh, are a uh, lot of steps we have followed. But just as an no, overview. No. See, what, what you need to understand is, uh, see, it's a very uh, typical business scenario. Okay, what, uh, whatever I am repeating, I am always telling you to imagine in a business sense. Okay. Now, let us just assume that you are you are ordering some product from amazon okay mm -hmm. you are ordering a mobile phone for example now order process you are clear how you create the order how you generated the order everything you are clear yes. amazon is now preparing to ship the material to you first what will they do they will create a delivery document just to inform you that the so and so material is being sent out now once the delivery document gets created what do they need to do? Let us um, imagine Amazon will not definitely have a small warehouse like uh, a one shop or something. It will be a very big warehouse. We cannot even imagine the size of the warehouse. It will be very big. So in that big warehouse, where are they go? How will they find out your small mobile phone? Just tell me. It is really difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So let us assume that all the mobile phones are stored in a particular storage location which they have named it as 005. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a particular area in the warehouse which is near to the door. Okay. Door in the sense it is an opening. From that point only you can load your mobile phone in. Hello. 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 I think voice is not answer. Oh. Left Sir Kelly. I was our recording call the Katar Kari Sora. Direct stop with nothing. Hello. Oh, direct stop with that. So, Um, 
विवेक कंप्लीट वीडियो रिकॉर्ड होते ना ओके ियलोस from one location to another location you got until that point right yes sir and now they cannot just send out the mobile phone because it is a very fragile product and they need to pack it properly so in that 916 location they will have all the packaging materials everything ready and they will put your mobile phone into that packaging material and they will pack it tight so which means that they are assigning the product to a packaging material that is the process of packing packing is nothing but they are assigning your material to a packaging material and that will result in creation of a handling unit handling unit in the sense the packaged product is called the handling unit so now the handling unit is generated now they just need to hand over this handling unit to the courier company or the logistics uh, company Whoever is responsible for delivering the product to you. Okay. Ah uh, yes sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. everyone are clear about this process and from the SAP perspective how this is uh, happening, you should be very clear. Yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, fine. now we have done the handling unit now if you go here mm, okay now document flow if you go here you can see the delivery document you can see the transfer order completed handling unit got generated now the process that is pending is we just need to hand over the goods to the courier company or the logistics company so you go to the change mode now we have this button here post goods issue can everyone so see will you be will you be showing the screen i think uh, it is unable oh i am sorry 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 i thought <laughs> sorry about that now are you able to see my screen yes sir okay so now you go to the change mode of the delivery okay now in this change mode now here you see a button called post goods issue can everyone see this yes sir so before doing the post goods issue you go to the status overview and check what are all has com- been completed and whatever is pending see here you can see that warehouse management is completed packing status is completed picking confirmation means warehouse activities are completed now the goods movement total goods movement status is a which means it is not started and the billing status is a and the transportation planning status is a so now mm-hmm. we need to complete the post goods issue which will make this as c or green color it will make so now you click on post goods post goods issue is a very simple thing from my sap perspective we just not need to go and click this button that's all now i am clicking this now 
posting the goods issue means you are transferring the control of the product or the material to the courier company or warehouse uh, or to the logistics service provider or whomever it may be so now the delivery is saved now let us go and check the document flow if you go and check the document flow now you see one more document got generated now goods issue delivery 49000010 got generated you can go and display this document this is nothing but a material document now what happens is when you do the goods issue okay the material is no more controlled by you so the 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 quantity of the material or the value of the material is already left to your premises it means that there will be some impact at an accounting level so now the value would be changed now earlier you were having a value of this stock in your warehouse is some 10000 rupees okay the total value of the stock present in your warehouse is 10000 rupees now you have shipped out one mobile phone which is worth 1000 rupees so then the value of the stock will now come down to 9000 right that is what it essentially means by this accounting or the material document so whenever a goods issue happens a material document will get generated which will tell you about the changes to the accounting so here you can click on accounting document here you will see what are the impact it, it will generate another three set of documents profit center document special purpose ledger controlling documents all these will be generated once you do the goods issue why is these are getting generated essentially to symbolize that there is some change in the value of the inventory whenever the inventory gets hit then the value of the inventory will change so once the value of the inventory changes definitely this kind of material documents would get generated to tell you that the value of the stock have been now changed so here you see this movement type this is the movement type 601 so movement type essentially means that whenever some changes happen to the inventory which will have a financial impact to understand what kind of financial impact happens we have this movement type up updated in this material document so this movement type 601 means it's goods issue related so you are sending the material out which means that the movement type will be 601 now having generated the goods issue now let us go and see what is the status of this delivery now go to status overview now here you see that the goods movement status is now changed to c and now the billing status is a which means that the billing is not yet done so the document is now eligible for billing to happen so now how do you do a billing document copy this delivery document access screen go to logistics sales and distribution billing billing document create ef01 is a transaction to create billing document go here update your delivery document here press enter the system will generate a billing document so this is how a billing document will look like so you just need to go and save this so you have saved this document so the document 9003 has been saved so this is the billing document that got generated now we can go and try to display this document so here you can see the document flow you can go here and see the document flow so you now you see the standard order delivery got completed invoice got fi document got generated so fi document means this is the accounting document so there will be two set of accounting documents one at the post goods issue level and another at the invoice level so now this accounting document has been automatically generated we did not do anything so you know you can go and display this accounting document so this is how the accounting document would look like
this is the accounts general ledger accounts which i was talking about so revenue will have one gl account the ledger account taxes will be accommodated in one general ledger account so all this will happen what are the various amounts that will get posted in which tax codes it will be posted in which currency it will be posted all this will be more relevant to a finance consultant you don't need to much worry about if you are not able to understand this this is just an accounting document so then when the customer is making the payment uh, we need to enter the incoming payment which is the next step okay so so we saw the document flow until this accounting we have seen here so one second let me tell you how to record the incoming payment now you can go to your ex screen So whenever customer makes the payment you can record that incoming payment go to accounting financial accounting accounts receivable document entry invoice so to which customer you made this uh, payment so we need to enter the uh customer and the amount so now let us look at the customer who is this customer he is 1033 so what is the date of the invoice it is today's date what is the amount amount is 4142.00 so you assume that you received the entire amount from the customer okay now try to save this posting is only possible with a zero balance so they have already made the payment
Uh, I will check this and let you know guys on how do you post this incoming payment. Okay. Okay, sir. I'm getting some error. Mm, let me check and fix this and then maybe I will let you know. So you can ignore alone this FB70 transaction alone and you can continue with our other uh, transactions from sales document until uh, invoice generation okay so what you can essentially do today is uh, you can start with this exercise for unit 2 so are you able to follow up clearly uh, if you have any doubts please do let me know so you can start with this exercise 3 until exercise 8 you can complete so exercise 9 uh, you can leave it i will let you know because i am facing some issues here in fixing this okay okay guys uh, any anything you wanted to ask before we move on to next topics so my function keys are not working sorry my function keys are not working okay in sap model hmm? f1 f4 are not working okay you need to uh, give uh, that there is one function key uh, separately right you need to press that and then you need to press still not working sir okay press the uh, shift and uh, try yes sir i tried i think you need to enable that which which system you are using uh, lino id pad yeah, it should enable no that one. Hmm. Uh, no sir, he is trying to say that uh, in SAP means the window uh -huh. in the remote desktop connection, uh, uh -huh. <coughs> he when he presses the function key, the operation is not performing. No, it is performing. See now I have pressed the F1 in this. No, no, no. Customer. Yes, not in the case with you, in, in case with him, he is trying to say. Yeah, yeah, that's what the function keys are not working. Uh, Is there any setting? Uh, let me check uh, and let you know. Okay, I will. I will check that. Function keys not working. Yeah, sometimes uh, we need to. Uh, what combinations? I'm not sure whether you have. Do you have a separate key FN? in your system yes so if did you try to press that and then try to press f1 uh, yes i tried it you don't need to press both together you just uh, first you press that fn and then press f1 or f4 okay, okay. i'll try yeah first you press that then separately you press the f1 or f4 okay. you don't need to press both together okay so i will check this uh, exercise last exercise i will check and i will let you know so apart from that uh, i think um, you can proceed with other uh, exercise uh, topics um, so any questions today so far a mini one so Sir, you can I at this uh, unit 2 uh, we have all this uh, i have covered although um, you can go through this uh, theoretically you can go through this whatever uh, i have told you it will be present here so uh, how the document looks like so all these things we have seen so the sales document for example it will be having uh, uh, uh different views so for example i just uh, will tell you what are the different views of the sales order this is the sales order what we created so here you will see three different views 
one is the header you can go here and click on this view this is called a header view and you can select on this item and uh, double click or you can double click on this item it will open another view which is called the item level view and inside the item level view you can select here and if you select this button it will take you to the schedule line so schedule line is nothing but a separate tab which is present at the item level so these are the three different views of a sales document or a sales document structure so a sales document essentially has header item and a schedule line so header will have information that is common across the entire document like sold to ship to uh, po number po date payment terms in quote terms etc sales area everything is part of the header item will have information specific to item like material number material quantity etc then schedule line will have this data specific to the delivery date and quantity so here you can see the schedule line will have delivery date and the quantity that is confirmed for that delivery date it will be present inside the schedule line so this is the basic structure of the sales document so tomorrow we will look into more details about how these three are controlled so header will be controlled by a separate component item will be controlled by a separate component schedule line will be controlled by a separate component that we will look at tomorrow so at this point you need to just understand that the sales document is having in three different views header item and schedule line so similarly delivery will also have header and item and again billing document also will have a header and a item so how they are controlled we will look at one now one by one whenever we go into those particular documents and uh, i will uh, give more information about these how they are controlled separately so essentially what you can do you can go through this unit 2 which we have shown practically how the different documents are created and what how, how they are processed separately except the incoming payment posting uh, i i have shown you everything and uh, tomorrow we will discuss more about each and every uh, document so i am not uh, i have only shown you how the documents uh, single documents i am not uh, uh, shown you about how to combine documents and create uh, multi uh, com uh, documents Uh, for example if we have two sales orders we can combine those two sales orders and create one delivery or one del one sales order we can split into multiple deliveries and all those deliveries can be clubbed into one invoice i have not shown you that concept apart from that you have um, i you i have summarized uh, all the other concepts uh, today so tomorrow we will start uh, with uh, how the combination of documents how the splitting happens on what criteria this happens and then we will look on how to configure our own sales document types so we have a standard sales document type or standard inquiry in standard quotation qt so we can also create our own document types and how to configure them we will see in tomorrow's uh, session and how they are controlled how these document types are controlled who controls those documents we will see tomorrow okay so vivek you are asking something yes sir i am asking about uh, yesterday's uh, unit 11 uh -huh. and i just uh, go through the exercise 43 and in that uh, i go through the solution uh -huh. in task 1 and task 2 uh-huh uh i have to ask just one means sir uh, can you could you please uh, scroll down to the solution part of the 11 unit in this pdf uh
यस सर सोल्यूशन सर स्काई पॉप ऑफ विंडो यस ओके फाइन सर ही सर सी देर दे आर गिविंग द सोल्यूशन फ्रॉम द एंटरप्राइज स्ट्रक्चर अंडर डेफिनेशन अंडर डेफिनेशन एंड इन टास्क टू दे आर गिविंग सोल्यूशन अंडर असाइनमेंट सो हाउ वी how could we do that means how do we know that we have to go through we have to go under definition or assignment see this all depends on the question so in the first question what they have asked what is the description of your sales organization thousand which currency is used to update the statistics what is the name and address of the sales organization so it clearly yeah. means that you are trying to define the sales org only when you during the definition you will update the currency you will update the name you will update the address so it is understood that you need to go to the definition okay so yes. in the task 2 what they have asked which distribution channel have been defined for final customer sales and service means here also you have to go to definition only because distribution channels have been defined in the question itself they have put defined so you can go to definition and check the distribution channels for customer final customer sales and service what distribution channels are used so this is the definition only okay no no sir this one is under task 1 there is a below that Now, uh, yeah yeah task. in task 2 the organizational unit determined have been used to configure various sales areas so how the sales areas are configured they are asking right okay yes. so when you go in the sales area configuration where you can see you can see it in the assignment only right here very clearly you can go here you can open both definition and assignment so now you go to definition in mm -hmm. this definition go to sales and distribution here you can see what and all you can define you can define sales or you can define distribution channel you can maintain sales office you can maintain sales group that's it now when you go to assignment in sales and distribution there only you can see setting up the sales area they are asking about sales area sales area is not present in definition anywhere it is present only in the assignment assignment okay you can open both these tabs together now you can open this also and you can open this also inside that you can yourself you can compare and see what and all is defined here what and all are assigned here so there is no need no you're not taking any test or exam now you can open everything and see whatever you want to see it is not any <laughs> test <laughs> yes sir yes sir okay you open everything and see question, whatever no. you want to see you can see okay yeah. Yes. only this comes only by practice vivek so you are just 3 uh, days old in this sap okay mm -hmm. you it yes. will take more time you you cannot become a master in day one itself okay so at least it will take more time and how much efforts you put into the system it is applicable for everyone not only for me or you so you need to spend more time in the system you have to go analyze your own you have to go and uh, open many screens you have to see what information is present go to each and every field put f1 and f4 and see how the system is defined so you need to spend more time in the system as much as time you spend in the system then you will get the proficiency okay so you cannot uh, expect in day one you cannot become a master so please spend more time in the system read more books pertaining to sales and distribution there is one book called implementing sales and distribution by glenn c williams so you can you can read that book if it is available online or if you can you can buy that book and you can read it is a very basic and it is a very good uh, informative uh, book about how to implement the sales and distribution configurations so you need to read more books and you need to spend more time in the system try to understand what are the different transaction codes what are the different tables everything so that you will become more proficient 
so it will take some time you don't need to worry that uh, you are not able to follow much you are just 3 days old baby okay 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 don't don't get uh, uh, disheartened that uh, you are not able to follow or something okay mm, no. uh, yes, more the more you explore in the system the more you will come to know okay even even i also felt the same thing when i joined the jp <laughs> class so you are no different than me so you just need to spend more time and you can learn automatically at least you will take another 3 to 4 months for you to learn and get a hold of the system so you don't worry that you are not able to grasp for much keep trying and reading more concepts so whatever we teach whatever Sir, i teach uh, yeah yes tell me yes sir go on no no whatever i hello we, yeah you are able to hear me your voice can can you can you hear me now hello can can you hear me hello yes ah uh, yes right now. yes sir yes, yes sir, sir. See, whatever we are dealing in the class you just try to read the theoretical concepts and then mm -hmm. try to do the practicals on the same day so that you will not uh, lose track of what is happening so don't postpone the things so just keep focusing on the theory part so in case you are going through the theory and if any line you don't understand or you don't uh, follow anything in that just raise it in the next session you just make a note of it raise it then and there and any issues you face within the system also raise it so that we can resolve it then and there and then we can move on to the next concepts i am i am i am actually going very slow because you are very new to this uh, system and uh, um, we will go we'll cover all the concepts very slowly only you don't need to worry and yes uh, try to remain in the uh, system don't uh, try to move out of this try to be fo remain focused okay definitely sir okay so any any other questions from anyone no sir no sir okay any others uh, okay so you can go through this theory part what you need to what we covered today and also the practical examples you can try to create i have shown you in the system so i think you will be able to do it on your own also so if you have any queries concerns you can ping me on whatsapp in the group you can put your queries until we meet tomorrow tomorrow maybe we can try to uh, discuss more and tomorrow i think uh, our plan is to cover the sales document configuration so tomorrow we will look at how the sales documents behave and what are the items okay okay sir okay sir anything else if you nothing then we will close our session for today thank you very much for joining and yes sir okay. sure and we'll meet tomorrow okay okay, okay. thank you have a good day yes. bye thanks sir have a good day to you